Hi, I'm Steve Young and I'm a Lead Technical Support Engineer for Avanti Security Controls. In this tutorial video, we'll be looking at creating and editing custom patches. This includes researching the custom patch, creating a custom patch for installs, testing the custom patch, and creating a custom patch for updates. Let's get started with researching the custom patch. So what do we mean by researching the custom patch? Essentially, we need to ask ourselves if the patch we want to import into security controls can be installed via a command line interface. We also need to know if the patch itself modifies something in the base file system or in the Windows registry so we can detect if the patch is installed or requires installing. If you can answer both of those questions with a yes, then we need to identify what is changed when the patch is installed and if there are any prerequisite softwares that require installing for this patch to be successful. Ideally, you should also plan out in advance what you expect to accomplish with your custom patch before you begin creating it. The patch I'm going to create in this tutorial video is for OBS Studio, a video editing software. To identify the changes the patch makes, I'm manually installing it to a test machine. This will allow me to verify the file system changes and registry changes that the patch install makes. You should also use this opportunity to test your command line installation of the software at this stage to ensure that there are no surprises down the line. Let's move on to setting up the custom patch for new installations. First, you'll want to navigate to Tools and then Custom Patch Editor in your Security Controls console application. Click New to create a new custom XML file. On the left, under the new custom XML file, you can see three categories for organizing your custom patch. On the right, the new XML file can be given a display name and description, as well as providing a button to validate that the XML file is in the correct format. To start our new custom patch, we first need to create a custom bulletin. Provide the new bulletin with a custom bulletin ID, title and summary. If we attempt to save the custom patch XML file at this point, we're presented with an error stating that every custom patch file must have at least one custom patch associated with it. Let's address that now by creating the custom patch definition. Click add patch at the top and a new custom patch definition will be added to the XML file. Update the patch number to an easy to identify reference for your patch and then set the associated bulletin to our previously defined custom bulletin ID. As we are creating an installation patch to perform a new clean install of the application, we need to select the software distribution patch type from the drop down list. We can then set a severity for the patch, but as this is a software distribution patch type, the severity field is not used. Next. We can take a look at the files, registry keys and targeting tabs to allow our application to be detected as either missing or installed. From the research stage, you should have identified what files or registry values are amended so we can insert these into the respective tabs here. Where possible, you should use the environmental variables as displayed by inserting the correct variable based on your system. In this case, I'm working only with 64-bit machines so I'll be using the program files x64 variable. For file detections, you should try to pick files that always have a consistent file name and are not prone to changing. For example, do not use an application's executable if it typically contains the file version in the file name. Instead, you can use the uninstall executable. This will commonly remain simply as uninstall.exe. Registry values are a little more simple to insert. Enter the registry key which contains the registry value and then specify both the value name, type and value data into the available fields. If you're working with a 64-bit machine, you'll need to check the Use 64-bit registry checkbox. Targeting is a little bit more advanced, so we'll take a look at that later on in the video. Next, on the Deployment Information tab, we need to provide the detail about the file that we're hoping to deploy with our custom patch. Clicking the Ellipses button allows you to browse a file on the local file system or network where the file name can be obtained as well as the file size. All that remains is inserting the command line switches for your application, as well as specifying the compatible languages for the application as well. At this point, I did notice a typo in my bulletin ID regarding the application version, 
so I went in to correct this. As I change the custom bulletin ID, the associated custom patch linked to that bulletin will also need to be updated. Now that everything looks OK, I can click save and enter a name for my custom patch XML file and then save it to my local disk for later editing if required. Closing the custom patch editor will prompt for custom patches to be imported into the console's content library. Clicking import now will open the manage custom patches window where you can select which patches to import. Once starting the import process, the console will first download and update its content to ensure the latest definitions are being used. After the import process is completed, we're now ready to test the custom patch. To start with testing, We'll need to set up a patch group and patch scan template that looks only for our patch. We already have a how to guide available that details this process, so I won't go into too much detail on this and you can follow the video along to give yourself a refresher on the process. Now that we have our patch scan template set up and configured to only look for this patch, let's test this by scanning a 64 bit machine. Remember, since we're creating a software distribution patch, when using this template, the patch will always prompt for confirmation before scanning to ensure that you are aware that new applications will be installed on all machines that do not have the application installed. The scan result has returned no patches. This means that the patch we are looking to detect as missing from this machine has instead been deemed not applicable. We'll need to return to the custom patch editor to correct this. In the custom patch editor, we'll want to open our existing XML file to modify it. Under the XML file, We'll need to review the scan information tab for the custom patch to determine why the detection is failing. In this case, we have a logic failure where we've been looking to see if a file exists to then check its version. In case of software distributions, for files, we need to state that the files must exist instead. Now that we've modified our XML file with the correct logic, we'll need to save the XML file and import it again into the content library. After importing the custom patch again, Let's rescan the machine to see if our new result is different from the previous result. Perfect. We now see the patch detecting successfully is missing which means we can move on to verifying the deployment works. If we right click the machine from the results area and select deploy all missing patches, 
We can push the patch out using the machine specific deployment window. However, the patch in this instance is listed as not downloaded. We need to first sideload the patch to our console's patch repository so it can push the patch out to our endpoint. The patch will also need to be copied out to any distribution servers if you're using a deployment template that uses distribution servers. Once the patch is sideloaded, we can repeat the previous steps to push out the patch and confirm that deployment is successful. If you're experiencing issues with the deployments, it is likely that your command line switches are incorrect. It is recommended that you test your command line installation again using psexec from the sysinternal suite so that you can elevate a command prompt session as the local system account to better simulate the command line install test. With our deployment complete and reporting success, we can review the results of the machine from the View Machines pane and see that the current patch status has been updated from missing to installed. Now that we've successfully created an application that can be installed from scratch, we'll want to move on to creating a custom patch that can update an application from one version to another. In this demo, I've created another machine that has an older version of OBS Studio installed and we want to update this to the same version as our other machine. Let's start this off by opening the custom patch editor again and by editing our existing custom patch XML file. Once inside the XML file, we'll want to change the patch number for the existing patch to indicate that it is an installer patch. When we try to append a suffix to the patch number, we can see an error is presented indicating that the patch number has a character limit. Let's adjust the patch number to adhere to the character limit while still providing an identifier. Now that we have a unique reference for our software distribution patch, let's add a new patch to this XML file using the old identifier, and this time set the patch type up as a security patch with moderate severity. For file detections, we'll also want to use the previous logic where the file comparisons are only made if the file exists, instead of forcing the file to exist. Finally, after setting up the deployment information, Save the XML file and import it into the content library again. Let's rescan our second machine with the outdated version of OBS Studio installed on to see how this patch now displays in the results. As expected, our patch now displays as missing. Upon viewing the results, we can see that the associated product though is the native operating system of the device. For reporting purposes, we may need to correct this, so let's go back to our custom patch and see if we can resolve this with a custom product. Let's fill out the form for the custom product by specifying the product name first. With regards to the detection of the product, a registry value must be used. The registry key must exist and then values can be queried with multiple comparison types. In this scenario, we want to verify that OBS Studio product version value name is present, and if it is, check if its version is higher than the version to 1.0.0. We're using this low version number so that we don't have to create a new custom product for OBS Studio for each major version, since OBS Studio can be upgraded from any version to any newer version. After adding a custom product, we must save the file first. After the file is saved, we can then go into the custom patch and use the targeting tab for the patch detection. Locating the custom product in the list, we can then add it to the box on the right side 
which means that the patch will only be deemed as potentially applicable if the custom product detection is a match for the machine first. After re-importing the custom patch and rescanning the machine, we can now see that our patch is detected as missing as an OBS Studio product patch. Thank you for watching this custom patch tutorial video. I hope you join us again for the next one.